All right, with that, good morning. Let's start it off here. Rhoda Israelov, if you would, please, let's give a, about a one minute introduction, please. Good morning all from Indianapolis, Indiana. Beautiful day here today at Say It For You. And my team writes what you read when you go on our client's website and what makes them get excited about going the next step further. So we say it for you. Thank you, Rhoda. If you would, Mr. Cowan, please. You're muted, Gerald. There we I, go. I was just doing what you asked me to do. Uh, Gerald Cowan, near Indianapolis, uh, practice law for more than 30 years. Uh, a good referral for me would be someone who is a senior citizen, who perhaps is uh, concerned about their ability to continue handling their affairs. Uh, they might need a, a, a power of attorney to a, a trusted person, a very trusted person, a living will to state what they want to happen in the event uh, they uh, are unconscious and need medical attention. And they might want to uh, have a uh, appointment of health care representative to be sure that the right person is, is advising us to their health condition uh, should that become necessary. And of course, they usually always need a will and a trust to direct where their properties to go. And the statutes of Indiana say where property goes if there is no will or trust. And uh, that's not necessarily what you want. You cannot remember your church or charity or any other uh, uh, causes uh, uh, except by, through a will or a trust. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Gerald Cowan and near Indianapolis. Have a great day. Thank you. If you would, please, Tim Johnson. Good morning, everybody. Pleasure to see you all here, smiling faces. Uh, good luck today, Jim. Enjoy. Um, I'm Tim Johnson again with Cannabis Safety First uh, here in Columbus, Ohio. With that, we'll move on. Thank you very much. <clears throat> all right, Mr. David Garrison. Good morning, I'm David Garrison, uh, near Indianapolis, a mutual of Omaha mortgage. And I work with wealth advisors uh, real estate agents and their clients <clears throat> utilizing housing wealth via reverse mortgages to provide additional cash flow options in retirement, as well as to buy, purchase a new home uh, in retirement for as little as a 50% down payment with never having a further mortgage payment. Thank you, David. Adele, please. Good morning, everybody. My name is Adele Bush, coming to you live from the Columbus, Ohio area, Hilliard, Ohio. Uh, my business is ASB, Business Services, LLC. We do personalized, customized, and exclusive executive telephone outreach. We also do business research and prospect development. Rhoda loves to say it for you. Well, ASB Business Services speaks for you on the telephone. We send your message. We make appointments for you. We share whatever goodwill you have with your customers, clients, and prospects by way of the telephone. Adele Bush, ASB Business Services, LLC. Thank you very much, Adele. Mr. Mike Chambers, please. Good morning, I'm uh, Mike Chambers. I'm here in Indianapolis, Northside. Um, recently retired independent insurance agent. So uh, appreciate seeing everybody this morning. Good, Mike, good to see you. And I think, Dal, you're up. Hi, I'm Doc Tippett. I'm in Wilmington, Ohio, and I help business leaders to become the leader other people like, like to follow. Um, I help them with strategy, organizational health, and their own personal leadership skills through coaching and training uh, in their businesses. Uh, the ideal client for me would be a CEO or entrepreneur who are starting their business, who are looking for someone to help them be the best leader they can be. Thank you. Thank you, Dow. Jerry Luco, please. Good morning. <clears throat> Jerry Luco, Franchise Business Source. So I help people that want to be business owners find a business that they can own, grow, and love. I work with uh, 300 plus different franchises at all investment levels, 20 some different categories, um, and all involvement levels. And I really hold their hand throughout the entire process to cut through the clutter and the confusion. So Jerry Luco, Franchise Business Source. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jerry. Gloria, please. Good morning, good morning. I'm Gloria Thomas from Columbus, Ohio. 
I am your secret agent with Secret Direct. We help people live better, uh, feel better, look better, um, and now travel better. Our club secret uh, is in pre-launch um, and travel is coming back. So if anyone that you know wants to get out, wants to do a little bit of revenge travel, let me know. Right now, the rate is 50 bucks um, to become a part of the club. It'll be 65 bucks in two weeks. So um, hit me back and let me know. Gloria Thomas, your secret agent with Club Secret. Thank you, Gloria. But revenge travel. Okay, that's that's a new term. I'm learning new terms every day. <laughs> <laughs> revenge travel. Tony Havocs, please. Hi, hey, y'all. Tony Havocs with PH2. Uh, we do environmental health and safety consulting and forensic engineering. I'm a certified industrial hygienist and a professional engineer. Thank you, Tony. Hey, so good morning again to everyone. I'll say Jim McComb. I'll let him do his introduction uh, when he starts speaking. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, I hope all of you are aware that the, um, uh, the decision yesterday to pass the legislation 1.6 trillion or whatever that number is, there are some opportunities in, those, uh, in that passage that might affect some of you. So get a hold of whoever your specialist is and make sure that if you are eligible for any of the uh, uh, things that are in that bill, make sure that you talk to someone about it. There might be some PPP there, might be some interesting things that might affect you. Even though you're a small business or you may think you're a small business, there may be an opportunity there for you to take advantage of something. So uh, just get a hold of somebody. Uh, and see if that's uh, something that might uh, be able to affect you. You never know. So uh, with that, I want to, um, does anybody have, because uh, we've got a little time today, because you guys started on time, that helps. Uh, I, I, I want to just throw a general question out to everybody that's in the group. Um, I want to know, in, when we do our survey, and start thinking about it. And that's why I wanted to ask, hey, what do we want this group to be about? That's gonna be one of the questions that will be on the survey. Uh, and then another one, then this is a key one, uh, for those of us who've been consistently coming, how do we want to take care of a fee structure? If we want one, we've already got some in place. And I want you guys to start thinking about this thing uh, and, and I wanted to give you a heads up early before we started, uh, before you even got your survey and stuff. There'll be some other questions, but I did want at least those two key things. Hey, what do we want this thing to be? Do we want it to be a little more interactive between the people who show up? And uh, maybe the speakers speak a little less, but we give opportunities to the people who are consistently coming to discuss their businesses, do we do featurettes, those kinds of things. That'll be on the survey. So we'll use that as feedback. And uh, Rhoda, go ahead. I wanted to add one question to that that I think is important for us to consider. And that is whether as a Zoom group, we continue as a, as a virtual group in several cities, are we still going to preserve uh, industry exclusive membership? In other words, are we going to try to avoid to have two CPAs, two realtors, et cetera, including in our guest speakers? So to me, that's a core question. Uh, you, we could be on either side of it, but uh, mm -hmm. please do think about it. Yes, no, no problem. And if you've got like a group question that you would like to put on, send it, just email it to me. Just, it's just a survey. I'm, you know, I'm too old to spank any of y'all. And so just if you do have a question or you say, hey, Keith, there's something I would like or don't like, just put it on there. It's not going to hurt anybody. We, we, we have a very consistent core of, uh, I send out about 40 uh, emails a week. We have uh, currently, and I, uh, some of you, if you pay attention to the videos, at the end of each video, I list every name that attended. What I'm actually doing is taking attendance. So I know who's come and I can verify by looking at the video. So that way I kind of know, 
I have about 17 regulars that have appeared at least three or more times. Uh, I, and I have some people who have never appeared. So, you know, don't, don't be reluctant. I'm a big boy. If you got a question, just send it to me. Otherwise, I'll send you some pretty standards. With that, though, I don't want to take time talking about that. Uh, I'm right on my target here. Mr. Jim McCone, if you would introduce yourself, it's now the Jim McCone Show. Thank you very much. If everyone else would mute, Jim, you also have uh, screen access. Okay. Um, I'm Jim McComb. I come to you from the far the farthest west suburb of Indianapolis. We're called Los Angeles. And uh, it is still dark here, but uh, hopefully not for much longer. Uh, we're here today to talk about a certain success in an uncertain world and how to thrive, how your business can thrive in a disruptive future. So, uh, I won't uh, take time to go through everything that's here. By the way, you will be getting these slides. So if you see some things you maybe don't have enough time to read, <laughs> you'll, you'll get that opportunity uh, uh, after the session. Uh, but do want to say I work with businesses, nonprofits, and government agencies to ensure their certain success in our uncertain world. And... Uh, Full disclosure, uh, Keith wouldn't share his age. I'll share mine. I'm 67. I've been around for a while and uh, have a lengthy career in uh, senior executive management in a number of fields with uh, some, some companies you might be familiar with, Countrywide, Bank of America, Aflac, IBM, Orange County, California, among others. And uh, I'm one of less than 100 people uh, in the world today that is a certified strategic planning uh, or strategic management professional actually says planning there. <laughs> uh, it's, it's both planning and management. Anyway, uh, you are about to get an eight hour workshop in 20 minutes. So fasten your seat belts and let's get rolling. Okay, the future is not guaranteed. And I've got a few facts here, some you may be familiar with. Uh, Inc. Magazine says 96% of all businesses will last less than 10 years. And uh, the last item there is an annual survey that Fujitsu does. And uh, most recent survey, 52% of C-suite executives said their business will not exist in its current form three years from today. So that's what our session is going to be about today. And uh, well, let's think first about strategic planning. I'm sure most people on the call have done it, either for your own business or you've participated while working at someone else's business uh, in an exercise like that. And, and you know that a, a key part of it is always a SWOT analysis. And the OT of SWOT, opportunities and threats, are always those things coming at us from the outside. And in, in regular strategic planning, those things generally are things that are already known to at least some of the people that are in the planning group. That's how the opportunities and threats land on the list, because we heard a speaker talk about it, or we saw something on the internet, or uh, we attended a, a business summit where it was being discussed. Um, but the next generation strategic planning really has to be something that prepares us and our business for those things that are unknown, unheard of, unbelievable, and unexpected, both opportunities and threats. So this is both a positive and a not so positive uh, concept here. But the fact of the matter is, these are the things that either undo businesses because they missed an opportunity or undo businesses because they weren't prepared for a threat. So that's next generation strategic planning is what we're going to talk about today. And those unheard of, unknown, unbelievable, unexpected things are called wild cards. Now, you've probably heard the term black swan as well. Black swan is different from a wild card, and we'll explore that in just a moment. But wild cards come to us because of the single source of pain that each and every person on this call experiences every day in their business, in their personal life, uncertainty. Comes at us all the time. My office is in a shambles this morning because the wall behind me has a huge gaping hole in it. 
because I have root invasion in my plumbing. And uh, my plumbers are in the midst of uh, tearing up my kitchen floor and my office wall. And uh, anyway, that's a wild card for me. <laughs> and certainly uncertain for me. So uncertainty, where does it really come from? Well, it, it's caused certainly by lack of knowledge, lack of foresight, lack of preparation. Those are all reasons why uncertainty hits us. And what that causes is a lack of understanding of the future because we don't understand what the seeds of disruption really look like that are, are characteristic of our particular space in the business world. And when we don't know what those seeds of disruption look like ahead of time, we're likely to miss opportunities and we're likely to miss threats. And those threats literally can destroy every aspect of your business, business model, value prop, customer base. I've mentioned several here, but certainly any aspect of your business that you can possibly think of could be destroyed by a threat that you miss and your business becomes obsolete because of it. So uh, what exactly is a wild card? Well, we've already described it as, as being something that's unheard of, unknown, unbelievable, unexpected. It's a high impact event or circumstance, and it appears just like that. Comes out of nowhere without warning. It's not a trend. It doesn't grow out of other events. And it's very wide reaching in scope. Now it might be narrow in terms of uh, being limited maybe to your business or to your industry. It doesn't have to be a, a worldwide thing like the pandemic, for example, which by the way is not uh, a wild card. It's, it's a black swan and I'll admit that or uh, discuss that in a minute. But, and the speed of change, the speed with which it hits you challenges your capacity to deal with it. It challenges your capability to deal with it. But in spite of those challenges, it requires that you respond rapidly and in a cohesive manner. And you know, in a crisis, when you get hit with something you're not expecting, you may respond in a rapid manner, but it's not cohesive. And we certainly have seen that in our response to the pandemic. Uh, and, and finally, it radically changes your outlook and your organization, and it does it overnight. And if you're a restaurant owner in America today, you understand what that looks like. One day you're operating and the next day you're shut down. So, how does a black swan differ? By the way, a black swan is all of these bullets that we've just looked at. However, one change, and it's what I've got bolded there. It was anticipated to occur sometime. So let's look at the three most significant things that have occurred in our country since the year 2000. We've got 9-11, we've got the Great Recession, and we've got the pandemic. And none of those things were wild cards because each and every one of those three things had happened before. The World Trade Center was bombed in 1994. So the fact that it was bombed again in 2001 should not have come as a surprise to us, and we should have been prepared for it. The Great Recession, we've had recessions before, we've had depressions before. Throughout American history, they have hit us. We know one's coming again someday. We don't know when, but it will happen. So we anticipate it will recur. Same thing with the pandemic. I saw a woman in the news uh, just a month or so ago who was getting her vaccine. She was 100 and some years old and had become a person who received a vaccine in both this pandemic and the Spanish flu pandemic back in 1918. She was that old. We had the SARS situation not too many years ago. So again, this pandemic should not have been a surprise. We should have been ready for it. So that's what distinguishes a black swan from a wild card. We're here today to talk about wild cards and I'll give you a great example here in a minute.
Now, in order to be ready to manage wildcards, you've got to be able to answer three questions. The first one, do you believe anything is possible? And I mean anything. I'm going to illustrate that in just a minute. You also have to be able to answer questions, uh, what events or circumstances could render your product, your business, or your industry obsolete in the next three to five years. You may say, gee, can't think of anything, but there are things out there. And we're gonna to talk today about how to brainstorm those things. Conversely, on the positive side, what events or circumstances could profoundly increase your revenue or your profitability or customer base? 20-fold, 50-fold, even 100-fold in the next three to five years. Okay, well, our management uh, process for uh, wild cards is five steps, and we'll go through those today. It's identifying potential plausible wild cards. And once we've identified those, pri prioritizing the ones that are the most plausible, uh, identifying the signals that tell us wild cards may be coming, sources of strategic foresight that will give us some other signals, identifying action steps to help us leverage a wild card opportunity, because in order to, to leverage an opportunity, you have to begin the process before the opportunity ever comes. Otherwise, you're unprepared for it. Same thing with the threat. If you want to mitigate uh, or eliminate uh, uh, a wild card threat, you got to begin to prepare today for those that are most plausible for your business. And then finally, successfully executing the uh, action steps. So step one is to identify the wild cards. And I just reproduced question number two and question number three here. And uh, the, the answers to those questions are your wild cards. So let's, uh, let's proceed to, uh, oh, and by the way, when we brainstorm wild cards, we brainstorm the opportunities separate from the threats. So it's kind of a dual process as we go through this. Now, in, uh, uh, in starting the brainstorming process, we build what's called a matrix. And, and I'll have an illustration of that in the next couple of slides. But across the top of that matrix on the horizontal axis, we have columns that are labeled with these items here, which are external sources of wild cards. And we call them external because they're things that happen outside of your business. And they're things that you have little or mostly no control over. And the items in the left-hand column are the seven drivers of change in business. And I won't read through those because they're fairly self-explanatory. You're, you're probably aware of most of them already. And then on the right-hand side are, again, external things that are kind of aspects of the way we live. And you might recognize several of the things on that list as being cabinet departments in the U.S. government, uh, things like medicine or healthcare transportation, energy, education. It's because those things are important aspects of our life. And so we include those here too on our uh, horizontal axis at the top of our uh, axis at the top of our matrix. Um, then we have on the uh, vertical axis down the left-hand side of our matrix are internal points of impact. And these are aspects of our business that uh, we do have some degree of control over, which is why wild cards generally don't grow out of these. They grow out of the external sources. But those external sources impact everything on this list. And you may look at this and say, I can even think of a few more aspects of my business that aren't here. And you certainly can, you're certainly welcome to, to add that to the process. But the reason we create a matrix and 
this is this is just an illustration. I actually built this myself in Excel. So there, there's nothing <laughs> uh, that's that's magical about this. You just simply put the external sources across the top, the internal points of impact down the left, and where we brainstorm wildcards. Well, my alarm is going off to tell me to wake up, so I need to turn that off. <laughs> I'm awake. Um, where the brainstorming takes place is at the intersection of the vertical and horizontal axes. So what I've got illustrated here is you would ask yourself question two and question three, what could make me obsolete? or what could make me fantastically successful beyond my wildest dreams? What technological change could impact my vision to potentially destroy my company, to make it obsolete? Or conversely, what technological change could benefit my vision in a way I hadn't even thought of? And that's how we approach brainstorming. And my next couple slides will delve into that a little bit more to show you how that brainstorming works. But by literally going through every possible intersection here takes a little bit of time, but I think you can easily see from this that it has real potential to draw out things that you have just never thought about that aren't on your radar screen either positively or negatively for your business. Okay, so let's look at um, the process of, of brainstorming uh, a threat. Now, one thing I wanna point out, um, and I'm having to read my notes here a little bit because I got pictures covering my screen, but um, what we do is, is I've got an intersection here of technology and customers that we're going to work on. And let's say, for example, we're a transportation company, a shipping company, a delivery company. Well, we're now going to test just how much all of you believe in whether anything is possible. What we're going to do is work through brainstorming a, a wild card here, and we're going to come to a conclusion that you may not have seen coming. So we start out by asking ourselves key question number two, which is, or actually uh, uh, for a, a threat, it would be, yeah, it's key question number two. What could possibly make our business obsolete? Uh, and, and what could impact our customers in a way that would make our business obsolete? Well, <laughs> customers no longer buy our product. Something technological happens that causes customers to no longer buy our product. Well, why would they no longer buy our product? It's because they don't need it anymore. Why would they no longer need the product? It's because the reason they're buying the product no longer exists. And why would that reason no longer exist? Because wildcard technology has been introduced to the marketplace that eliminates the need for our product. So let's say I'm that delivery company we were talking about. Let's, let's say I'm Federal Express or I'm DHL or I'm UPS. What could possibly happen technologically that would eliminate the need my customers had for my service. Well, if any of you are familiar with Star Trek and that phrase, beam me up, Scotty, you may have believed that that technology would never be possible in your lifetime. And it is. Three teams in the world have figured out how to do it. Now, they're not doing it with people yet. They are doing it successfully with inanimate objects. And that will occur not only in your lifetime, but probably commercially available in the next five years or so. 
The only reason it's not available today is if I want to send something to Keith, another book for his library, for example, they haven't figured out yet how I can get that book into Keith's hands. I can get it to his property because the way they do it now, it's GPS based. I can get it to his property, but he's going to have to hunt. And he might find that book in his garage, might find it in his backyard, might find it under his bed. I mean, it could be anywhere. And so obviously it's not technology that's ready for prime time yet, but it exists. And it's easy to see that unless my company is part owner of that technology, I could be out of business literally tomorrow. Because why would someone pay me to deliver something in three days that can be delivered in three seconds with new technology? That is a wild card. Okay, let's take another quick look because I see time is starting to get away from me here. Uh, how would you brainstorm an opportunity? You methodically ask the questions the same way. And here I've got an intersection of changing consumer lifestyles and value proposition. So we'd, we'd ask uh, key question number three. Uh, and our business must offer customers compelling value they can't get anywhere else. That's the wild card we're searching for here. So you'll notice when we're figuring out wild card for opportunity, we're gonna start with the opportunity we want and work down to how we get that as opposed to the threat. We start with the threat and work down to what the wild card is that ultimately delivers that threat. So it's kind of a reverse process here. Our business must offer customers compelling value they can't get anywhere else. Why can't they get it? Because we have unique products, unique competencies, unique intellectual property no one else has. Well, how did we come to get that? It's because we positioned ourselves for a unique niche before competitors saw the need. Well, what created the need? Well, we simply listened to a broad spectrum of socio-demographic segments and what they're telling us is what they want or expect their lives to look like in three to five years. And that's why the best, the, the companies who do market research best, who do focus groups best, who do surveys best, don't say, well, tell us what you want to see uh, better about banking, if you're a bank, for example. It, it, companies typically have surveyed only on their particular type of product or service. What, what do you want to see improve? Well, most of your customers can't do the thinking to give you the wild card in this case because they don't have enough information. You do. But what you want to ask people about is how they want to see their lives different, not how they want to see banking services different. And when you ask people about their lives and you just let them talk about what they wish their life was like in three to five years. A lot of people today are going to tell you the one thing that they like about their life today is how quickly they're able to get things. We live in an I want it now society and, and have for a number of years. But as technology gets better and better, that I want it now escalates even more. And that's a clear message we as a transportation company get. So we asked ourselves, okay, how could we deliver value no one else will have and give people the ability to get it now? Okay. We remember teleportation in Star Trek. I wonder if anyone's working on that in the world today. And you know, there is a way to find that out. And I'm going to tell you about that when we get to signals. But there is a way for you to have insight into some things that you may never have heard of. 
today and may not know what's going on. But if you're an astute business owner, you can take advantage of what is happening now and get in on the ground floor of something that you may not have known about until it was already invented and rolled out. So, okay, need to speed this up a bit. Step two is uh, prioritizing wild cards and you essentially do it this way. You evaluate the degree of plausibility that each of your brainstormed wild cards has and you separate, again, the opportunities from the threats. So you're gonna have two lists and you rank those. And then the degree of impact, and you rank those. I'm gonna show you in a minute how to do this. Wild card, which wild card opportunities are among the five most plausible and the five highest impact of all the plausible wild cards you brainstorm. And those five, you're gonna focus on. And the same thing for threats, which are among your five most plausible and your five with the highest impact. Now, you only may have three that are on both of those lists, the most plausible and the highest impact, but those will be the three you will focus on and prepare for. Now, I'm not going to go through all these lists or all these bullets because, like I say, you're going to have these slides and you'll be able to work through this. It's real easy to understand and follow, but uh, on this particular slide, plausibility, you're going to wind up after you answer these questions. Uh, thinking about how likely you feel the wild card is to occur at some point in the next five years. Very unlikely, somewhat unlikely, somewhat likely, or very likely. And the very likely wild cards are going to get put on your prioritization list so you can eventually come down to five. Same thing with impact. Series of questions here. And in, in the end, you'll ask yourself, Will the impact be very significant, somewhat significant, somewhat insignificant, or very insignificant? And the very significance will be the ones that kind of graduate to the list that you're going to get your top five from. Okay, now we get to signals. What's happening today that's likely to tell you where your industry, your customers, your products, and your business might be headed? Those are called signals. There are things that are occurring today that you can then look at your wild card list that you're planning for and go, you know, the fact that that's happening leads me to think that this wild card maybe is even more plausible than I thought it was. And then where are you most likely to be able to take a peek into the future for a look at where your industry, your customers, your products, your business might be headed? And those are called sources of strategic insight. So here are some of those signals. And you might be looking at this list going, okay, but man, how do I find out about new discoveries and emerging synergies and trends and predictions? And how do I find out about that stuff? And there are three really great sources where other people do the work for you. Those three great sources are these, um, and we'll actually be able to find them on the next slide, which is the sources of strategic foresight. But uh, you're gonna see on this list, trade associations. Many of you may be in a trade association for your business or your industry, and you know that those folks typically have uh, lobbyists at both the state and the federal level who are constantly uh, keeping their, uh, their ear to the ground on what's happening and where things are going. Uh, trends in the industry typically pop up in a monthly newsletter for a trade association. So you can get some insight there and you'll say, well, yeah, but everyone else is going to be a member of that too. And so we'll all know the same things and I won't have an edge. Well, how often have you read your last trade association newsletter? <laughs> Most people put it in the to be read later pile and never get to it. But if you dedicate yourself to the last 15 minutes before you go to sleep every night to read and you take your reading pile to bed with you and you skim, you're gonna learn these things. The other two sources are uh, futurists, and I don't mean the people with the crystal balls, 
but the world's future society. I would Google them and I would join. It's cheap. They have publications that come to you that again, will tell you about things you don't have any clue what's going on because scientists, economists, sociologists, a lot of experts are the people that are members of that association, write the articles and the journals, and they're the ones that are the strategic thinkers and they share it all with you. The last one is university professors. And specifically, there's, there's a university you may never have heard of. It's called Singularity University. Singularity. Jot that down. It's run by a gentleman named Peter Diamandis. And his name is spelled Diamond and then A-S on the end. Diamandis is how he pronounces it. This guy is one of the foremost futurists in the country. And it's from him that I found out what was going on with teleportation. And he has a free newsletter called the Abundance Insider that you can just email him, say, I want to be on the list. And that will come to you every month. And it will have things in it that confound you and amaze you, yet may have some impact on your business. So strategic foresight. Now we get to step four, coming down to the end here. Uh, for each high priority, describe specifically what would happen to each aspect of your business if the wild card, first opportunity, then threat, would occur. So you have a, a good, clear idea of what's really going to happen in my business if this wild card happens. How could you most effectively leverage the opportunity? And what action steps would you have to take to do that? And bear in mind, you want to know about the opportunity before it becomes well known to your industry. And in some cases, just the mere fact that you're preparing for the opportunity will cause it to happen. I've seen, I've seen that happen with clients. And with the wildcard threat, how can, uh, what steps do I have to take to mitigate or eliminate that threat really having any impact on my business? And there are restaurant owners out there who could tell you the pandemic did not impact them, even though they're shut down for indoor dining. They got into other related types of business and literally did it overnight because they had prepped ahead of time, anticipating that they could be shut down. Okay. Last uh, step is uh, executing the strategy. And I, I won't read this because again, uh, you're going to have the slides and you'll be able to go through this, but essentially it's thinking about what I need to be able to do to initiate the steps that I just laid out uh, that will take me to, uh, say, leveraging an opportunity. Uh, what kind of equipment, supplies, facilities, intellectual property would I need to be ready for this? And, and so on. So anyway, I know what you're thinking. Wow, this is going to take a lot of time. Wow, it's going to take some thinking. But I will tell you, the business people who took a weekend and did this for their business are thanking themselves today because it was an investment that is well worth the effort. And in fact, those are people whose businesses didn't skip a beat in, in the pandemic. So there's my contact information. I'll put that up. I'm looking at the clock and I realize I have like totally blown over my 20 minutes. Um, I, I will confess uh, before I guess we throw it open to questions that uh, I was a Toastmaster for 33 years. And if any of you have been Toastmasters, you know they have a designation there that they call a DTM, which stands for Distinguished Toastmaster after you've done a whole lot of stuff and completed it. But for me, they re renamed it uh, DTM, Don't Time Me. <laughs> so now you know why. <laughs> 
I apologize, but hopefully this information has been useful for you. Hopefully I've provided you a tool that will really help you enjoy certain success in an uncertain future. And I'm available for questions after you get the slides. Just call me anytime, email me, happy to help you. Hey, Jim, no problem. If you return a screen back to me. Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, it, you know, th th this is, there's no way in the world that all of us sitting in the middle of the pandemic, uh, that this is not an impactful topic. But I, I, you know, I have a question. I own for an extended period a small business. Most small businesses, and be honest, do no planning and we live day to day. What you've presented, thorough, comprehensive, uh, the best practices, but from a small business perspective, how, how do we cut a little piece of this thing? Because that's my concern. It's like you said, you know, I'm not going to go to bed at night and read the futurist. That's probably not going to be the thing. So, and shortly, how could we encapsulate, like, if you had to give me one thing, say, Keith, here's at least where I would start. Okay. What a lot of small business people never do is articulate a mission why do I exist? Why am I in this business? And by the way, if your answer is to make money, get out of business wrong, now. That's wrong that answer. I agree. the wrong, wrong answer. answer. But what, why am I in business? My vision. Where do I want to be with my, my business in five years? Your set of a half a dozen core values that guide every decision you make in your business. Those three things are critical. Without that, the rest of this works. And if there's anyone on the call that has never really sat down and done those things, I have little worksheets that I give my clients, which I'm happy to give you at no cost. If you will just contact me and say, you know, I haven't done those things. I'd like to figure out what my mission is, what my vision is, what my values are. I will send you those worksheets and in an hour of thinking about it, you'll have those things. And then after that, you just ask yourself the question, what do I have to do today to get to where I want to be in three to five years, consistent with my values, what I believe, and my mission, why am I here? No problem, Jim. Thank you. And I'm, I'll probably take advantage of that. Anyone else have any questions for Jim? Um, Cause I've got a couple of more if, if somebody else doesn't have any. Dow, why do I see you twice? <laughs> I don't you know. Me twice? No, you Dow. See me, oh. You see me twice because I have computer issues right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> to see okay. on my monitor, I have to use a secondary monitor, but to see me, I have to use my phone. Okay. That's no, no problem. I thought so. I thought maybe, maybe this was a black swan or maybe, you know, I'm, I'm having an issue here. So, so uh, Adele, please. Uh, just a quick comment, Keith and Jim. Thank you very much, Jim. That was a very, very, very helpful uh, presentation. And my comment to you is this, you gave us a reality check. A lot of small businesses have a tendency, like Keith says, we live from day to day. Hey, you know, uh, la di da. But hey, there are some deep underlying issues that we really need to think about and address every single day. So thank you very much for waking us up, at least waking me up. Well, and if, and if you don't recognize the issues, you can shoot yourself in the foot. A lot of realize that Kodak, which is now virtually out of business, actually invented the digital camera and then became a victim of it. Yeah. Yeah. Because they didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. My, and, and every industry has that kind of story. The actual inventor of the mouse, Xerox. <laughs> <laughs>
right? Didn't know what to do with it. Didn't know what to do with it. Uh, so, you know, those, these kind of uh, wild card situations are just, you know, everybody now, I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and not think, I can be affected by something strange happening tomorrow. The pandemic has offered clarification to every single one of us as a business owner. Uh, I don't care, you know, glorious business, travel, like they just turn the lights off. That's crazy, right? You, there's no way anybody's sitting around going, oh no, I won't be able to travel to wherever I want to. It's like, no, they literally turn the lights out. Same way with restaurants. Same way with, you know, lots of businesses that did interact. But at the same time, you know, we have Tim on the other end. Uh, there are emerging opportunities that you must take advantage of or should take advantage of. And you can ignore them. Like you said, Jim, you, we can ignore them. It's not going to stop them. So, you know, just a real, uh, th th this, like you say, this is an eight hour presentation that we got in, you know, less than 30 minutes. But there's just so many things. You know, my question that I wrote specifically is, how do you see what you can't see? How do you see what you can't see? The way to answer that question is to go back to those two slides um, that worked us through the questions for brainstorming a threat and an opportunity. If you just methodically work through those questions and, and just test it, you know, take, take even the sample matrix that I put in the presentation and, and do an intersection of something for your own business that you can see on the screen and then work through both of those two slides as was the case with teleportation. And, and I kind of set that up by picking a transportation company as opposed to a diaper service, for example. But, but I guess even a diaper service could be impacted by that. But what you do is you just stop and think, okay, I'm a transportation company. What do I have to do to offer something that no other transportation company can offer? And the answer becomes obvious, even if you never saw an episode of Star Trek, it's I've got to be able to get something to the customer even faster than the fastest possible way we're doing it now. So what is that way? And you're more likely to know the answer to that if you're doing what I suggested. And that is you're a member of a trade association. You are uh, subscribing to Peter Diamandis's newsletter, which is not a lengthy thing. It's, it's like an 11 by 17 sheet of paper folded in half if you were to print it out. It's like four pages. And then, uh, oh, and, and membership in the World Future Society, and you just read their magazine every month when it comes. That's not a lot of time invested, but you will be surprised what you learn by doing those three things. Um, and, and they're all cheap. World Future Society, I think is like 60 bucks a year. And you get a magazine, you get quarterly newsletters, you get a lot of stuff. Uh, trade associations vary. Uh, some of them can, can be a little pricey. But, uh, and, and Peter's, Peter's thing is free. So it, it's not gonna cost you a lot of money to get a whole lot of knowledge that you don't have today about what's happening in the future. And even if it's something that doesn't seem to impact you specifically, like, you know, none of us had businesses in the Twin Towers on 9-11, but that still doesn't mean we shouldn't have said, hmm, how is this new security threat going to impact travel. That could impact me, which in fact it did. Um, you know, we're all taking our shoes off. And then we got really scared when there was an underwear bomber because we thought the next step was going to be, you know. <laughs> so that's, that's my advice to everybody here. 
Okay. Okay. No problem. Hey, before we go, Alex Gray, you got late. If you would do an introduction, I'd appreciate that. Yep. Sure will. My name is Alex Gray. I live just northwest of Indianapolis, and I spend most of my time doing equity investments. Thank you, Alex. I like him. He's always short and sweet, so that's my my favorite kind of intro. Hey, uh, just a fantastic uh, lot to think about. A lot to think about. If you're running a small company or even a big company or whatever, man, you got to take a minute to to do this kind of stuff. And I know I didn't do it enough. I, you know, I'm just going to be honest because you're so busy putting out fires. It's classic. You're so busy putting out fires. You're not thinking about like, maybe I ought to build a, at least a longer fire hose, right? Quit using the garden hose. So, you know, if we well, can. And you can do this if you will set aside a weekend. And frankly, if, if you're not willing to set aside a weekend for the future of your business. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be tough. All right. Hey, Jim, thank you so much. Uh, I will see all you guys next week. Dow will be our speaker. And uh, at that time, we probably won't have dual dials, but uh, hopefully we'll get that in order. With that being said, I'll see you guys next week. Look for the survey within the next five to seven work days. Uh, like I said, if you have some questions, send them to me. Uh, if you send them to me by this Friday, I'd appreciate it. Uh, oh, by Monday, there's no rush, by Monday. But I'm going to get that out to the, our regulars. With that, we're going to sign off. And I'm not, I'm not going to be Star Trek. I'm just going to sign off. I will see you guys. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you. Bye-bye.